are so many things that go into making a coffee. I just about passed out when I saw Murray walk over and about take this lid off here. Because this is an airtight container. And if he took the lid off there, it would let air in. Thank you, Murray, for not doing that. Because all these beans need to remain in an airtight container. You're going to hear, well, you probably heard it was grinding all those beans up. And Linda then took the grind. It was actually a grind was for a specific time. If it had been too long or too short, the coffee would have been a bad coffee. But then she got a, a, a thing called a tamp, and she tamped it down into the head that she's now making the coffee through for Anne. Hey, Anne, you, do you have sugar, Anne? That's good because we don't have any. <laughs> and, um, and we were about to uh, tempt. If she had tamped it too hard or not hard enough, it would affect how the, the water ran through because there's water in this coffee machine and she's now putting water through the beans to a certain temperature, 93 degrees to be precise, is going through. And then she pours the water through for a specific time. Too long, you burn the beans. Too short, you don't get the flavour that could go through. And now she's fluffing the water. But for Anne, we've made it milk. <laughs> she's fluffing the milk, and she's going to get it to a certain temperature. Too much time with the wand in the milk, she's going to burn the milk. And Anne's not going to be a happy camper. And we all know what happens when Anne is not a happy camper. Get it right, please. <laughs> Kemp, you like coffee too, don't you? <laughs> Kemp's going to need a coffee after this one too. So Anne and, Anne and Kemp, you're our coffee winners. But why do I put that out before I start a service? Why are we, we doing this? I want us to understand that there are a whole heap of things at play. There's a coffee machine going on, there's water temperature, there's the grind of the, the beans, there's the beans itself sitting in a, in a uh, hopper that's airtight, there's the, uh, when it's ground, there's the timing involved, and the, there's so much involved. Thank you, lovely Linda, so I call you. There's so much involved, but if you get it right, when it all comes together, this is the result. Very good. Very good. Yes. Very good. Too hot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was talking about the coffee beans, not myself. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so there is an awful lot going on to make it just exactly right. This coffee machine does a lot of it automatically. The coffee machine out there, that's manual. And I tell you what, you and there's many people will thank us when it all comes together and it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So a lot of care goes into making the right coffee. The right coffee tastes really good. I had to send one back the other day. I think I've become a bit of a snob. But it takes quite a few elements to come together to make that beautiful coffee and then there is the timing involved it all takes time but just at the right time it's made good it's made beautiful can i spiritualize what we've just spoken about for a second if you want to achieve well, if you want to achieve the things that God has for us to do, then those considerations are also considerations that we need to be taking into our life. God's timing is absolutely key and important. And as there are many different elements that make up the coffee, there are many different people achieving God's purposes. 
And when it all comes together and you get the final result and that result is good, there is a good unity that comes with it all being together. And as a church family, that's a beautiful thing as well. You see, 2020, we've already heard from, now I'm the third person saying this, it's been a weird year, hasn't it? None of us saw COVID coming. If you remember, here at Northgate, right before COVID, I mean right before COVID, we had what? Our first vision dinner. Remember, everyone came down to the church and we shared what 2020 would be. <laughs> 2020 turned out a little bit different than what we had seen. But I want to say this morning, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed at all. We might not have been able to kick off 2020 the way that we initially thought. But you know what? That's okay. God saw it coming. 2020 can still be and has been a good year. Why? Because our God is in control, no matter what happens. And I want to respectfully say that, because I know COVID. I know people's individual circumstances and situations. They might have changed, and, and some of them not for the good. But I want to be able to say, because of who my God is, everything everything becomes good in God's time. You don't believe me, but you believe the value of the word of God. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1, it says, There is a time for everything. There is a season for every activity under the heavens. That's not Paul's words. Those words are Solomon's. And with just the right timing, everything comes together. And then it will somehow be used of God to achieve good. And while you can argue the point about coffee with me, if you don't believe that, you're ignoring Solomon. And the Bible talks about Solomon being the wisest man that had ever lived because of the wisdom endowed upon him from his heavenly father. And so I start out my sermon today and I want to focus on the fact that at 4.15pm this afternoon, we're about to experience a whole lot more than just a few of us arriving, should I say, all of us arriving with plates of food on to share with one another. We're about to experience so much more than welcoming Jonathan and Fiona into our church family even. We're about to go into a new season that God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, has for us, his people here at Northgate. I want us to understand it is the most perfect timing. It's the most perfect timing for us here. It's the most perfect timing for Jonathan and Fiona. But it goes way further than that. It's the most perfect timing for our neighbours, for our friends. And God is going to use this new season at Northgate to produce good things. Do you believe that? Are you excited for that? Have you considered that at 4.15 this afternoon, a new season starts? And our God is in control of that season. 
Solomon helps us to unpack and to understand the most incredible thought as to how to comprehend how we've got to this new season at Northgate. And I want to unpack just the word time in Ecclesiastes 3. There is a time for everything, it says. That word time in Hebrew is a funny looking word. Can we bring that word up? Possibly. <laughs> there it is. Look at that. Who would like to attempt to say that word? <laughs> Thank you, Graham. <laughs> Correct. It is the word time. And in Hebrew, that word is zaman. Zaman, I think that's how it's pronounced. It refers to a specific moment. It does not refer to a period of time. Understand that? There is a time for everything. That word time indicates that there is a predetermined purpose on which all things depend. Every human life, as we know, has a span. And within its duration, our life goes through many different times, situations, circumstances. But there's a duration. Man may see all those circumstances and situations as random things that are happening. But the Bible teaches that God has chosen purpose in everything. In fact, Romans 8, 28, what does it say? We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. Now, there is a, a writer of a concordance. His name is Jay Winter. And Jay Winter, uh, his concordance is called Opening Up Ecclesiastes. And he says this in his book. Man has mastered many things, but he has no control over time. Each moment is God appointed. This afternoon, a new God appointed time starts for us. A new season dawns at Northgate. And I want you to understand, I'm excited. It's not to say that God hasn't been active before this. In fact, I, I think all of us know that's far from the truth. God has used everything to date to align us for this afternoon, our new chapter. And it's going to be good. It is a good chapter that God has written for us that will go into the many chapters before and the many chapters to come. But here's the thing. It's not going to be about us. It's going to be about God. It's going to be about him. God's timing is perfect and it only produces good things. It's all about him, but I'll tell you what, he's blessed us by giving us one another. So in a sense, it is about us. It's about us reflecting who God is to those out there. You see, we're all different as much as all these different elements within a coffee sh machine come together and at the right time, just make something good. So God has aligned us with many different people at Northgate. Very different people at Northgate. Very, very different people. Would you not agree? I think so. When I, I started here at Northgate... And I worked alongside Graham. Hey, it's going to be a positive statement, okay? <laughs> and I worked alongside Graham. I saw just how different 
two people can be. And you know what? I loved my time working alongside Graham. <laughs> Good on you. And I actually really miss the times that we have. I really do. But God started a new chapter. And it's going to be a good chapter. And it's going to be a chapter where I start to, to work alongside the next right person that God has brought along. But we're all so different, aren't we? Linda. Linda and Paul. It would be fair to say that that saying that we've all heard, chalk and cheese, was perhaps based around Linda and myself. Would you not agree, Linda? Not so willingly, but okay. We are so different. Guess what? You think that's weird? What does it say in 1 Corinthians 12? Let's read it. Now, if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, are you ready for this? God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. You see, it's a fact of life. We are different and if we were not different here at Northgate, I think I would be worried. I'm so blessed to be part of the body of Christ here at Northgate. But I'm only one small part of that body. And I need you as much as you need me. But the trouble is, we are all so different. So different that we can come across in real strange ways to one another. We can even get what Kiwis have termed as getting right up each other's noses because of those differences. In other words, our differences can really annoy and frustrate one another. But you know, we need to learn to work together because it's when we come together things work out for good. We display the qualities of God to other people. There is a much fuller expression of who God is when each one of us come together with our unique differences because each one of us display and have been created in his likeness. So if you don't work well together with someone else, and I'm saying this to myself as much as you. Get over it. Because in God's time, everything is done for good. You are different. Celebrate your differences. In Ecclesiastes 4, it talks about two being better than one. It talks about the value that's put on relationship. And it dates right back to the beginning of creation. We were created to be together, to be in relationship, to be in unity. If you think back to where God had created Adam, what did he say to Adam? It is not good for man to be alone. And so he created Eve. And dare I say it? They were probably quite different. But Adam was in relationship. First and foremost with his heavenly father and then with someone else. Jonathan and Fiona start tomorrow. Yes! Yeah. 
Sorry, you weren't supposed to hear that. Jonathan and Fiona start with us tomorrow. And I have no idea how Jonathan and I will shape up together. I suspect, from what I've seen, we're going to be quite different people. And praise God for that. But I do know this, that this is the time. That this is the season. And it's God that has determined that the two of us will take on the challenge in this season of being your pastors. And I'm excited because God does not get things wrong. I hope you don't question what I do and think God has got something wrong. But for whatever reason, I'm excited about going into this season. So I'm committed to making it work for us. I don't want Jonathan to change for me and I hope he's not going to want to change for me because it's not about us. It's about God. So I need him, Jonathan, and he needs me, but it doesn't stop there because we're not the full representation of the Northgate body. We all are. And as such, we need each other. I might be the hand. Jonathan might be the mouth. For goodness sake, don't stick either of us where the nose should go. Only the nose fits there. And the nose might be one of you. And I say that respectfully for the nose. 2020, it's been a weird year but don't start thinking you're not needed anymore we need you more than ever as we start out on this new season please don't give up serving you might just be our eye and we might not have another eye don't force us to put a leg where the eye should be it's not going to look good our body's not going to work well, and our body's going to look pretty strange to other people when they come in. We are all uniquely gifted to serve in different areas for the encouragement of not ourselves, but for others. We are different, but let's choose to celebrate that. Let's choose to move into this new season as the full expression of the body, all serving where God has called us, setting out to fulfill the good that God has for us as his body in this new season. And that leads me to the third part of this coffee illustration. All these parts come together to produce something that people think is good. They all work together in unity. They all come together with their part to play. And Psalm 133 is the most beautiful of Psalms. It says, how good and pleasant is it when God's people live together in unity. You see, we have our differences, but God's desire is that we accept and we celebrate our differences. Verse 1, how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. Can I break that horrific word down for you that David uses in the psalm? Unity. Do you know in the Hebrew, yachad, it means harmony? Harmony. Can you believe it? When we come together, people who are so different to each one of us, they're like strange humanoid earth dwellers coming alongside, and God says, as we come together, it will be good. It will be pleasant. And when we stop dwelling on our differences as being something that's negative, and we start to dwell on the fact 
that we each display a representation of who God is. And as such, when we come together, let's focus on dwelling together in unity and harmony because that's how a good coffee is made. According to God, that is good and pleasant to him. I don't know whether you've walked into a coffee place and you smell the aroma of coffee. Now, I understand if you're not a coffee drinker, this, you probably won't relate to this, but if you can smell the good aroma coming from it, it's a beautiful place to be. And God's saying when you dwell in unity, you dwell in harmony. And to him, it's a beautiful and pleasing fragrance that comes. But when people who come who do not know him, come into that cafe where there is harmony and unity, they too go, what is it that is so beautiful about this people? It's the fact that we dwell together in harmony and that's pleasing to God. And so, while 2020 may have taken us by surprise, I want to encourage us again, it didn't take God by surprise we shared at our vision dinner what we felt was the way forward COVID slowed that progress and that's okay you see at 4.15 today we're meeting to welcome in our new lead pastor and his wife our prayers are continuing to be answered by God COVID has not stopped that And so he's shown us that Jonathan and Fiona are going to be the ones who will help assist us all to do that which he has called his local church to do here in Rotatuna. But you are very much part of God's picture and plan. And we need you as we head into this exciting new season that God has for us. Can I be bold enough to say it's no fluke, it's no accident that you're here with us today? You sat yourself here, not any one of us, but God wanted you here this morning to hear this message. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been here. And so I'm going to ask you this question. How are you going to respond to him this morning? 4.15 today, we open the new chapter. And I'm going to ask, will you join us? But you also might be sitting here, and what you've heard, you've never heard before. Maybe it's the first time that you've heard that you were created with purpose and meaning. Maybe it's the first time you've heard that you're not an accident, and that you are needed. How are you going to respond to what you have just heard? Either way, can I say, please don't let this moment pass. Please don't go away having done nothing with what you've just heard. Now is the time to partner with us. As I've said, we need you. But we also need those who partner with us to be open to being used of God in ways that you may have never been dreaming about before. And so firstly, if you live your life in a way that honours God and puts him first because you've told him that your life is now his to use as he pleases, then we need you because he is empowering you to help bring change as we serve him here together at Northgate in our communities and in our workplaces. But if you've never turned your life over to be used of God in these ways, then we still need you. But you need to turn your life over to God. Don't let this moment pass. I'm going to end by praying for us all. 
And if you've been challenged to partner with us, but you've never lived intentionally to honor God, then I would love to talk to you about this after the service. Don't leave without connecting because we need you and you need our God. Come and talk so we can help that journey start for you. I want to pray for you. But I want to also give the opportunity for us to put legs onto what I've just said. And so as I pray, I'm going to be praying, firstly, that we are all continue to be impacted by the reality of who Jesus Christ is. And then I'm going to ask that God will continue to bring unity upon us here at Northgate. If it's your desire to join with us into this new season, I'm going to ask that you stand to put legs to that commitment, not for me, not for anyone here, but to say, God, I want to be part of this new season. And let's pray together and let's commit this new season to the Lord before it even starts at 4.15 today. So let's pray, and if you're wanting to join us, stand. Father, I want to thank you that you are God. Lord, I want to thank you that you align all all things. Nothing takes you by surprise. And Father, we know that there will be people here who may have heard the gospel message for the first time about you loving them, about them being created by you perfectly with purpose and meaning. And Father, they have struggled without purpose and meaning to their life. Lord, just convict that heart today, we pray. May they know it is them. And Father, I ask that they would turn their life over to you and say, I'm sick of trying to live it in my own steam, in my own way. I don't know what it even means, but I give my life afresh and new to you today. If that's you, then just say amen. And then come and see me afterwards because I want to talk to you. Father, I also want to pray for the future of Northgate. Lord, I want to thank you that you have been so active throughout Northgate's journey. Lord, I want to thank you for the roots that we come come from. Lord, I want to thank you for Hillcrest, for, for Chapel Hill and the investment and time that many, many people have put. But Father, today is a new season for us. It is a birthing of, of uh, a new time where Jonathan and Fiona are going to come and join us here at Northgate. And Father, we're going to step into new things. Lord, as each one has stood to say that they are committed to serving you through this chapter alongside each one of us. Father, help us to connect well with them, that we might be able to be a great expression of the body of Christ, that we would put on a great display of who you are, not of who we are. And so, Father, I pray for a supernatural ability of your spirit to fall upon us, that we might love well, that we might invest into others well, that we might reach outside of ourselves, that we might sacrifice for you the pleasures of this world. And so, Lord, as we bring all the elements, all the people of Northgate to you now, unify us in a beautiful way, I pray. Position us well that we might be used of you to bring glory to yourself in this new season. Our lives are yours. We commit them afresh and anew. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said.